and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, coming to us from Seven Sagas, and currently creating Dawnfall. The one and only Rui Anselmo. How are you doing today, man? Hey, thank you very much for having me. I'm doing great. How are you today? I'm, do I'm doing good. It is a decent sun Sunday afternoon. It's n and um, the only thing the only thing I'd ask is for a bit cold, bit colder of weather. It's colder. Okay, it's 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 pretty cold on my side. <laughs> oh, pretty. It's still in the double digits. That's a little bit too warm for January for me. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Um, you are in Fahrenheit degrees, right? Um, for talk. Uh, for to <laughs> for talking so, Fahrenheit uh, or Celsius. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I, I, I'm talking Celsius. Uh, that that's what we we have in Portugal. I'm so sorry. <laughs> And so we are. We have like 18 degrees, which must be. Uh, I have no idea how to translate that to Fahrenheit. Yeah, give, um, give me a minute. Okay, 18, sure. 18. That's 64. <laughs> yeah, it's it's thir It's 30 over. It's 30 Fahrenheit over here, which is minus one Celsius. Oh, okay. That's cold. That's cold. <laughs> it's slightly warm by my standards. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, in Portugal, we can't stand that weather. At least in Lisbon, that that's way too cold for Lisbon weather. Yeah, like cold to cold to me is like seventeen below Celsius or something like that. Uh, yeah, that that's freezing. That's freezing temperatures for for Lisbon. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, no matter if it gets if it gets colder, you can you can just add more layers. When it gets hot, sure, you, sure. you can always put on more than you can take off. Okay, sure. Unless you're trying to be Archimedes yes. or something, which I don't, which I don't encourage. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, I, ju I just go with the flow with, with, in the weather. So it's it's if it's warm, I take my I jacket off. Yeah. So with that with that said. Walk me through your first introduction to role-playing games and what made it stick. Uh, okay, uh, sure. Um, I think I've been role-playing for the better half of 35 years now. Um, and uh, about some 20 years ago, I started designing my own games, but they were very short, very simple games. Um, it was just with a um, recently with a chat GPT that I started doing some more elaborate games, and um, I had uh, two or three laid out before starting Dawnfall, and um, I was trying to um, to get one that I could uh, do a crowdfunding campaign, and and I think. That one that, that was post-apocalyptic would be the most agnostic one to to get to the most people. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, um, I, I I like simple games. Uh, I I don't have the, the the patience or the will to learn complicated games. And I'm thinking about uh, Exalted, for example, um, and. Uh, the, uh, the, f the design philosophy behind Downfall, behind the mechanics of Downfall, is that uh, I wanted some something that uh, I could learn easily. And, uh, and I think that the mechanics of Downfall are so easy to learn that you could just grab the Quick Start Edition and start playing right away. And um, that's what I am regarding to, to games. Um, I, I've, I've, been, I've been gaming for, for a long time, and I, I think I've gamed... Uh, I played or gamed a lot of of games, and uh, I've fallen into this niche where I'm very most comfortable. I'm most comfortable at with simple games, games that you don't have to uh, read tons of pages of combats or rules or shopping lists of powers. Uh, that's 
what I really don't want to either play or game master or or create and uh, that that's who I am in a nutshell and that's what Dawnfall and its mechanics are in a, in a nutshell mm -hmm. and when it comes to one of the when it comes to Dawnfall one of the things that I am that I immediately noticed especially since this is something that isn't done all that often is the fact that you're going with a diceless affair if, if yeah. i'm not mistaken that no, you're not. diceless games are not are not i won't say that they're a rarity but there's but they are going to be in the minority when it comes to the totality yeah. of, ro of role-playing games yeah um, well, that's that's a joke that I often tell. It's that uh, the dice hate me and they want me dead. Um, well, whenever get, I play games, get, get um, to to that I say get to that I say get in line. But what I, <laughs> what I was curious about is what prompted the what prompted the decision to go diceless for this game. Uh, well, I've been wanting to make a create a diceless game for a long while. Um, I experimented with several uh, mechanics, and um, I, I, I have a, a very small, very uh, even simpler than Dawnfall. I have a, a much smaller game um, where I experimented with a rock paper scissors mechanic, um, and um, this one uses a blind bidding, uh, in that you. You bid from an effort pool against the the GM, and whoever has the more points uh, wins. Um, I wanted to do it um, because uh, I know that the games are a minority, but I wanted to do it because again I wanted to do a game for me, for myself, for a game that I, I wanted to, I would love to play. And um, one thing I noticed while testing it is that the the game is from diceless and um, people might think that um, uh, everything is preordained it isn't because you have the principle of uncertainty you have you, you have no idea what the other what the other guy is is, is bidding um, so there's that that that's what what got me into uh, the, the, the diceless mechanic I know from also from play testing on, on uh, from from chatting with with friends that dices mechanics are not for everyone because um, I, I've seen people throw dice across the table uh, when when the dice doesn't doesn't fall with the numbers they they want. Um, but I, I also seen them cheering like mad when the die when the die result is, is what they want. And I wanted something that you could control, but at the same time that. Um, uh, was an uncertainty uh, so the, uh, I came to the again very simple mechanic of blind bidding uh, you bid up from point from a pool um, you get to bid one to five and the other guy bids one to five and and there's that that's really not much not much to that not much more to that sorry mm -hmm. and when it comes there's quite a few there's quite a few skills that Yes. Target that are going to be in this, and given given that, I'm curious if you are going to be if you are doing a archetype based approach with character creation, or if it's a case of getting you have a certain amount of skill points to spe to spend on on um, character creation and just have at it. You know, something something kind of like the way skills used to work in the special system in Fallout. Oh okay. Um, I, I'm not familiar with the, with um, with the Fallout RPG, um, but for for Dawnfall, uh, you have the the factions, and uh, the factions have um, skills that they are better at than the, the other factions. So you get a bonus point at character creation, and you have twenty points to sp to to spend across. I have no idea how many skills, um, twenty plus skills. Um, and there's that you can you can't have a skill higher than four at character creation. It can go up with experience. Uh, it can go up to whatever number you, you want to. Um, but at character creation, the highest is four. And uh, the differentiation, the, sorry, the differentiation is in the factions. 
Uh, one faction is better at fighting, one faction is better at bartering, one faction is, is better at building stuff. And so you get one bonus point um, for one, two, or three skills, depending on faction you, you choose. You can go factionless, uh, I mean, not choosing a faction, a particular faction, which means that you are not affiliated, but then you get you don't get um, as many points at character creation, and, and you uh, don't get the cool things that come with, uh, with the factions. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I have no idea if I answered your questions or not. Yeah, um, I think I think that did. So, mm -hmm. since you since you mentioned faction, let's go. Let's go into this. Is this a, is this a case of have of having different factions that are um, different philosophies, a la the factions in Stalker? Uh, again, I'm sorry. I, I'm not familiar with the game Stalker, but yeah. but yes, there are. Uh, 10 plus factions in the game uh, each one has, has a different philosophy um, that you can choose to adhere to um, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, let, let me jump uh, a bit further into the, the conversation by talking about passions um, so your character has four passions a goal, motivation, a relationship and a flaw and those can all be related to your faction. Uh, so at character creation, you can choose uh, from um, a small list of appropriate uh, passions for your faction, or you can create your own. There are uh, suggestions for that. And um, when you role play your passions, if, if the passion is, is um, faction appropriate, you are role playing your faction. Uh, so you get that you um, you get to role play it you get a differentiation in, in, in that um, when you get your, your faction I'm so sorry uh, probably if you can explain more the, um, the stalker uh, system uh, I can better um, answer that 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 more that more or less covered what I, w what I was going at what I was going at I was just using oh. stalker as okay. a um, example Okay. Because oh. it looks it looks like you have t you have um what appears to be four four major fa four major um factions, and it looks like you're going to be plant in the quick start, and you're going to be planning on a few more. Um. Within within the full description for each, do you do you plan on having a few notes on how the on how each of the factions views the other factions? Like if they view them neutrally, yes. if they view them with hostility, if they if they view them with with um, apathy or something in between. Yes, 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 yes. There is um there is a kind of relationship map at the end of the um, chapter on factions that covers that. Uh, so if you choose a faction, uh, you more or less understand how you stand according to other factions and the other players. Have the, the same notes as well. Um, so you know, when encountering someone, uh, you can more or less tell by their behavior uh, from what faction they are if they are following their faction standards to the to the limit. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I was I'm, I'm trying to get the um, the chapter on factions because there are way more factions than. The ones covered in the the quick start edition because the quick start edition is uh, just uh, a little bit to show uh, players um, what the game is about mm -hmm. and i have it here two four six eight ten yes there are ten factions at all mm -hmm. and um, i'm planning on if the campaign is a success on future settle supplements to Either get more factions or get sub factions. I haven't decided yet. So yeah. to expand a bit more on the on that. Mm -hmm. The now with that with that in mind, I've seen some post apocalypse RPGs um, have mm -hmm. so, have some rule regarding de, regarding um, equipment quality and the and mm -hmm. the possibility of degrading equipment. Is yeah. that something that you've that you've considered for this, or is that something that would not fit with what you're trying to do? 
No, I don't think so. Um, my approach to designing this game is um, getting a very narrative game, a narrative-oriented uh, approach to um, equipment. Uh, I also have a, a chapter on that, uh, describing whatever you want and whatever you might need, what whatever uh, is appropriate for your character or things you can find in the game. And they all have uh, a single mechanic attached to it. Is that uh, if it makes sense to have the, the, the advantage, then you have the advantage. And the advantage is plus one um, point that you can spend on the on the on the task, on the role. Let let's call it. Um, it's not. Uh, let's say that you have a, a targeting scope on your rifle. Um, it's not that you can see better, but it might give an advantage. Um, it, it's really just as simple as that. Uh, uh, um, I'm repeating myself because this is a very important point for me, uh, for this game and for the design philosophy behind it. Uh, there, there are tons of suggestions in the game for equipment, but they are merely that suggestions, because they will only give you um, that single advantage point. Um, so, the difference between uh, your targeting scope and my kitted kitted uh, revolver is narrative. Uh, you can describe a rifle as uh, as as much you like, as as much you like, uh, with um, I don't know, um, with the equipment you you um, and the adjustments you you want for it. But in the end, the mechanical advantage the advantage is the the single plus one you get, and the same thing for my pistol, and the same thing for my armor, and the same thing for my tar uh, for my rebreather. Uh, or for my uh, anti-mutational pills, uh, whatever. Um, I, I want to have a, a very narratively, a very narrative approach to 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 the game, because I, I wanted it to reflect on on the players' choices, not because of the bonuses they they gave, but because of how cool they would look on the character history, and and uh, and they could talk about it. Uh, for hours on end, um, because it was a cool piece of equipment. But in the end, the the mechanic, uh, the mechanical bonus is just a plus one. Hmm. Now to go further into to go further into that. Okay. When it when it comes to advancement, is mm -hmm. is it going is it is advancement mostly going to be just get just um, just spending exp on getting. Um, on getting higher ratings on skills, or what sort of approach do you have for advancement? Okay. Um, do you know the game uh, The Shadow of Yesterday? Yes. Yes, okay. So you know the keys mechanic. Yeah. Though, for, okay. for the benefit of anyone listening who is not familiar, could you give the skinny? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, for Shadow of Yesterday is a very, uh, I don't know, 15 to 20 years old game, I, I'm not sure. And it's a fantasy indie game. Uh, it has a very cool mechanic, I, I love it very much, called the keys, um, which um, uh, is something that makes our character move. Um, so, if you have a key of non-violence, whatever, in an action when you don't exert violence, you get an experience point. Uh, there are several levels to that, uh, depending on how they affect you. And the more you adhere to them, the more you role-play them, the more points you, you get. And you can also uh, forfeit your key, saying that this does not make sense anymore to my character, so I, I won't follow this key anymore. I want to I want to sell it. And then you get, you get a bunch of uh, extra XP. Uh, you don't get to, to, to use that key anymore because you just said it doesn't make, doesn't make sense to your character and you then buy another key that, you know, I don't know, makes makes more sense. So I got that same approach um, to, to downfall in the form of the, the passions. You remember when we talked about passions. Um, the way you roleplay uh, them uh, is how you get XP. Um, but I... Uh, you don't get only XP, you get an advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, so an advantage can be an XP that you save for later, or that can they can be an immediate bonus to to your skill, or they can be um, 
There's some things to... Um, and there's this. I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. But there's a, there's a stress mechanic that is the, basically the damage mechanic. And the way you heal yourself is by also role playing your passions. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can lose a point of stress, which is the damage, by role playing your passions. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm forgetting anything. I'm so sorry. But that's the basic mechanics uh, of of. Um, and you can spend them, you can spend your experience points on, on skills and on perks, uh, which are what's uh, another thing to differentiate between characters. Um, from the um, quick start, you, you will notice that there are no attributes. So you have no idea to um, if your character is stronger than other. You have an athletic skill, but that doesn't tell you if your character is stronger than mine. But you can buy a perk uh, to tell if your character is stronger or not, or if he's well connected, or if he's uh, charismatic, or whatever. Uh, there are all kinds of perks, um, and you can also buy them with uh, with experience points. There are some that are faction appropriate that you know we can only buy if you are uh, from that faction, and. Um, well, that's that. That's that's where you spend experience points in in skills and in um, in perks. Uh, there's no limit to the um, uh, highest the skill can go, uh, because a skill is not only um, a measure of how good you are, but also how much uh, effort points you can spend from uh, your effort pool. Uh, this is in, in connection with what, what I said about the, the diceless system, about the, 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 the blind binding. You are bidding from your effort pool. I, I, I think I've, I've mentioned that. Uh, you bid from your effort pool. Your pool is 20 points. When you get to zero points, you have to rest or uh, roll play your, your, your passions to, to get more, more points. Um, well, I think I think that's all. I think I've I've covered the whole game <laughs> with this. Now, speaking of, speaking of that, when it comes to when it comes to advent, when it comes to, I guess for lack of a bit for lack of a better term, in, um, playing playing those passions, um, mm -hmm. I'd like to talk a bit about guidance since. Since some games have a, have a similar um, role playing that role playing this to get some sort of advantage, but mm -hmm. in terms of, in terms of what is a in terms of examples for passions or aspects or what or what have you, um, mm -hmm. some games have issues with that. And I'm okay. curious if in in the full book you plan on putting a a bit a bit of a bit of guidance for what is what would be to, what would be too broad or too specific for um, what a passion is intended to be? Uh, well, um, no, I, I've re I haven't really thought about it. No, um, uh, there, there are some passions that are um, covered in the book. Uh, uh, I was hoping um, players would stick to them and i have not planned on getting a, a passion creation box but you can you can have them if you want to um but i think i i i can see where you're getting at um there, there's there's an um there's an um an affection in the game called the enslavers uh because i, I thought it would be very appropriate for a post-apocalyptic game uh, looking at the, the influences like Mad Max and Fallout, uh, Fallout the, the the PC game, not the role playing game. Um, you have you have those in a post a post apocalyptic game. Uh, that's the one thing uh, where I put um, beware of this uh, notice, because I I for one don't condone uh, violence against people or people uh, owning other people. So that's the the message in the in the box. If you want to play one of the enslavers, uh, there's this, this, and this. So don't be. I, I have no idea if I can, I can say this or not, but don't be a dick. Um, 
that that's the only thing that there and um, right now I'm I'm writing um, another free adventure uh, which I'm hoping to release if the funding gets to uh, the 50 percent mark um, and the new free adventure is um, uh, based on an uh, enslaver's um, uh, a fortress. Uh, there has been a raid, and uh, the leader of the of the, the camp has been uh, slain in combat. So there's a power vacuum, and you are you are one one of the prisoners that they they made. Uh, so you have to escape and uh, navigate the politics of the the power vacuum filling up with um, the other lieutenants. Uh, I think it's, it will be a very cool very cool adventure. And um, I, I'm bringing this up not only because I want to, the game to, to reach the 100% the funding, but also because of your question. Uh, I wanted um, to show uh, the darker side of the, the game. And uh, I think that the, the Enslaver's faction is probably the, the darkest. And I wanted players to be at the, the forefront of, of it, to, to see uh, for themselves how, how they work. Um, and uh, while writing it, it reminded me of um, an introductory adventure for Dark Sun, for Dark Sun the um, Dungeons and Dragons setting mm -hmm. in the... That's to be at the forefront uh, to show uh, the darker aspect of the, the game. So that's the only that's the only warning I have in the the whole game. Um, if you want to play this, uh, don't be a dick. Uh, I, I don't I don't condone people owning other other people. That's that's it. Mm -hmm. um, something I, I've been. I've been chatting about with uh, with friends about the the game. Um, is that uh, how do you role play? Uh, how well do you role play? What is good role playing? I'm I'm sure you've talked about it as well. And um, there are some games that you have to follow the um, the premise of the game to to role play it well. I mean, Call of Cthulhu, you don't you don't role play it like you were playing Dungeons and Dragons. And for this game, um, I think you would role play it well if you uh, followed your character's passions, and that would be that would be it, because um, that's how you get experience, that's how you get advantages. Um, you, you can be um, a, um, you can you can role play your passions for the experience points, for the bonuses, or just for the for the kick of it, and you would be um, playing the game uh, well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, with with that said, what would you be shooting for as far as the total page count of the full book? Um, I think it would be close to the two hundred pages. Uh, which includes uh, an introduction to the to the world as it is right now, uh, the factions. Um, there are several pages on um, character creation, on how the system works, um, advice for the for the GM. Um, uh, something I. I I love about the, the role-playing aspect of it, which is moral dilemmas, uh, how to build them, how to, to play them, how to face them. Um, there's also uh, an introductory adventure uh, written there, um, which is different from the different uh, from the adventure in the Quick Start Edition and from the new free adve uh, free adventure. It, it is longer, and you can play it into in two to three. Uh, game sessions um, and um, it, it, it has uh, art throughout which, which increases the page count uh, but it's a very beautiful book to look at uh, I, I still I am still refining the book uh, PDF is written as it is 
but I'm I'm punishing it right right now uh, because um, I wrote it three or four months ago, and some of the stuff I know now I didn't knew uh, at the time. Um, I'm speaking of um, my design philosophy and my experience, and also my experience with a, with a, with playtesting the the game. Um, and the, the my polishing it reflects that. And so there are some changes. Um, for example, when I started writing it, um, the skill ratings were also your pools. So if you had five in a skill, you could you could only spend five points uh, throughout the game. Mm-hmm. So if if you sp- you spend all five uh, skill points, you couldn't use it anymore unless you role play your passions, which got me into a problem because um, if you have if you had the um, the best sniper in the world and you had that killer shot in the first scene of the game, then you couldn't fire your rifle anymore, which wasn't cool. So I changed that. Uh, and I changed it during the playtest. Um, when I started writing it, it, it made sense in my head to, to have the different skills uh, each be their own uh, pool. But in, uh, in playtest, it, it was a no-go. Uh, players immediately called me out on that, and um, I changed it right away. Uh, another thing I changed uh, in the game um, and uh, were the um, the counters that you uh, that that other PDF file that you can download um, in the game in, in the original text um, you had to write the numbers on a, a small piece of paper and I think it was on the very first play test session that one of the players had five. Uh, small pieces written one to five and I was writing numbers for each task and he wasn't and I said and I said to him why aren't you and I asked why aren't you writing anymore well I don't have to I can just just reuse this and I said why of course I'm so stupid I could have just thought of that uh, so there's that um, so the, the page count has increased from I, I think 150 to close to 200, and since I'm uh, still refining it, I believe it will get to the 200. I, I'm not sure if it will surpass the 200, but I think it'll do, it will get to the 200 pages. Mm-hmm. All right, and I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how it develops. But with mm-hmm. that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. Oh, thank you for inviting me. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I okay, thank you very much. Here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!